In this question, um, I wanted to go over a few questions where you see how the pulley, when the mass is given, changes the settings. So if only the mass M is given 1 and M2, then the tension in the pulley uh, would stay the same. So you have the tension in this case, T, and the tension in here would be T. And if there is no friction, but there are mass, uh, the force of gravity, so M2G, and if there was acceleration, let's say in this way, and in here, then you would write the system of equations. You would have the tension is equal to M1A for the top mass, and you have the tension minus M2G is equal to negative M2A. Then if you solve this question for A, you have M1A instead of the tension. If you replace the tension with what tension is equal to, uh, minus M2G is equal to negative M2A. Then if you move all the A's on one side and uh, M2G to the other side, you will have A is equal to M2G divided by M1 plus M2. So that would be your problem if the mass of the pulley was not given. If the mass of the pulley is given, then the system is changing. Or the way we look at the system, we, we look at the system differently, we solve the problem differently. If I assume that the mass of the pulley is M, um, and they tell you that a certain height will, uh, the both masses will move a certain distance, and I'm going to call it H, um, and let's say there's still no friction, friction would change the problem, I could say that the initial potential energy of the system is equal to the energies, so if we start, I'm going to call this point A and this point A, then at the end, when the mass moves in this position, this is going to be the point B, and this will be the point B, when both masses move a certain distance. Um, so when I, if I assume that potential energy right here is equal to zero for mass 2, then the potential energy for mass 2 is equal to mgh. And this is by how much the potential energy of the system will change from A to B. The block 2 um, at point B will have some velocity. So after the blocks move a distance h to the right and one falls down, then this potential energy is transferred into the kinetic energy of both blocks. So you will have kinetic energy of the first block and kinetic energy of the second block. So you will have mgh, and that's the second mass, is equal to one half m1v squared plus one half m2v squared. That is if um, you don't have the mass of the block M, uh, of the pulley is given yet. If the mass of the pulley is given, then the pulley is rotating as well. You will have the kinetic energy of the pulley added into the system. And kinetic energy of the pulley is equal to one half. And then you have um, the inertia of the pulley in angular velocity squared. So that is a rotational energy. Uh, rotational kinetic energy. Also, both blocks will move with some um, same velocity when they are moving. And I used this question in one of the videos in the past when I do rotational motion lessons for you, uh, but I wanted to go over different details of how you solve these type of questions uh, depending on the situation. So in this question, if the setting was this way, then I would write, um, let's say the pulley that is given. So let's say this pulley is solid. And if the pulley is solid, then inertia of the solid pulley is going to be equal to 1 half m and r squared. Mass of the pulley is m and r is the radius of the pulley. So if it's not a hoop, if it is a disk, then uh, its inertia would be equal to one half 
uh, mr squared. So now if I plug in all of this into my equation, I would have m2gh uh, equals to 1 half. And I can take v squared out from both of those. So I have v squared and I have m1 plus m2. And plus for the pulley, I would have 1 half. Instead of inertia, I'm going to have another 1 half m r squared and then I have omega squared and if you did the lessons in the past that I had on angular and rotational motion you have that tangential velocity is equal to r times omega so you could rewrite r omega both of these squared as v squared then our expression would look like this so I would have m2 gh is equal to one half and then i have v squared and m1 plus m2 and then for the pulley i would have one quarter m and instead of r squared w squared i would have v squared so replacing angular motion or angular velocity and radius of the pulley with um with the velocity of the blocks so if you're looking for the velocity of the block so we both see like the velocity of the blocks right here so at first i'm going to times them all by four to get rid of the fraction so i will have four m2 gh equals to two v squared and then i have m1 plus m2 and then plus m v squared so I'm solving for v squared. I'm going to take v squared out of um, the whole thing. So what's left is going to be 2m1 plus m2 and plus m. And all of this is equal to 4m2 gh and equals 2. So from here, I can solve the velocity of the blocks as the square root of... 4m2gh divided by 2m1 plus m2 and then plus m. So that would be if we had a mass, mass has fallen a certain distance. Um, if they ask you acceleration and the tension in the rope, then the system, the way you solve this whole system of, of the problems are completely different. So this was if the mass was falling down a certain distance. Now I'm going to solve a different question where I'm going to find uh, the tensions in the top and the bottom of the, because in this question, if the tension was exactly the same on the top and the bottom, then you would not have um, this pulley rotate. So I'm going to look at if this was tension two and this one tension one, and then the pulley will start rotating, then let's look at this different type of question. So what I'm gonna do is, I would ask in this question that I found, um, suppose the pulley has a mass m, so I'm gonna say m instead of mp, and the radius r. Find the acceleration of m1 and the tension in the upper and lower portions of the string. Verify that the answers agree with the part that you set up when mass was equal to zero. So let's look at this type of question. So if the tension here is T1 and the tension here is T2 and T1, and this one is M2G, the force, and if there is acceleration A1 and if there is acceleration A2, we will have T1 is equal to M1A, and we'll have T2 is equal to, um, so we can write the by steps, so do that by steps, minus M2G is equal to negative M2A, and then I can move MG to the other side of the equation, and that will be equal to um, M2G minus m28 so i have the system of these two equations i also can look at the um at the pulley 
and in the pulley there are torques acting on the pulley so I'm gonna look at it this way so here I have the pulley and then I have tension 2 is acting this way and tension um, 1 is acting this way and then I have the radius of it is given that way and this way and the mass is given so what I can say is the torque of the system so you've seen this in the videos in the previous videos the sum of the torques is equal to um, it's the same as sum of the mass is equal to ma so the sum of the torque is equal to inertia times the acceleration um, angular acceleration so the torque of with t1 is equal to t1r and the torque with t2 is negative because because it makes rotating an object in a clockwise direction so minus t2r and equals to and the block is or the pulley rotates in a uh, clockwise direction as well so it's going to stay negative negative i or um, inertia times angular acceleration so from here i could take r out and i would have t1 minus t2 is equal to negative um, inertia times the angular acceleration then we have t1 minus t2 is equal to negative i alpha over r and the inertia of the disk is equal to uh, one half m r squared and then i have alpha for the angular acceleration divided by r so t1 minus t2 is equal to one of the r's can be cancelled and i have negative one half and on the top i have mr alpha or angular acceleration and again to go back to angular and linear relationships so the tangential velocity is equal to um it is r times angular velocity and the tangential acceleration that's the one that we have a1 and a2 um, equals to r times angular acceleration and here i see in my formula i see r times angular acceleration so i can rewrite this as t1 minus t2 is equal to negative one half m and angular acceleration or in uh, tangential acceleration so here i have tangential acceleration so from over here i'm gonna go back and say, set t1 minus t2 from these two equations so i would have m1a minus and this is my t2 so if i subtract it i have m2g and minus this negative sign um, in my system of equations will give me a positive if i subtract negative so m2a and all of it is equal to negative mr and we decided r alpha is a so that is equal to so from over here i see what my t2 t1 minus t2 is equal to so it is equal to this and i'm going to set it equal to um negative one half m a so just to go over it over it quickly so i solve this t2 minus t1 minus t2 so this gives me this part and then I know what t1 minus t2 is equal to from over here. So I said it equals to that part. I'm going to times the top, the left and the right by 2. And then get 2m1a minus 2m2g plus 2m2a. And equals to, if I times by 2, I only have negative ma. And I am looking for the acceleration and I should classify this here so a1 and a2 is the same acceleration because um, if the block m1 moves a certain distance the same distance m2 moves so it's the same um, acceleration for both of them they move the same distance over the same time 
because they connected otherwise the rope would break so coming back to this equation i'm solving for acceleration so i'm going to move all the accelerations on one side so i have 2m1a plus 2m2a plus ma and i'm going to move mg to the other side equals to 2m2g so the acceleration is going to be equal to 2m2g divided by so if i took a from over here i would have in the parentheses left 2m1 plus 2m2 and plus m so that would be the acceleration of the system and then if i know the acceleration i can go back and find the tension for the top and the bottom part of the pulley so i thought i would go over this type of a question um, and explain different types of changes that the problem has when the system is changing depending on what kind of question is stated so maybe let's look at one of these questions where we have numbers and slow slowly solve each different type of this type of question um, that you could see so in this case i have the masses move without the friction move the distance h uh, the top one to the right and the bottom one down and I'm going to look at the energy. This is the energy type of question, right? So I'm going to look how much energy do I have to start with. So initially, I have this much potential energy, which is M2GH. Here, I'm going to have potential energy of this block is equal to zero. So I will have to change the potential energy for the block two, which is M2GH. This is the loss of the potential energy for the block two. Where does this energy go when the whole system is moving? It will go into the other two blocks and then the mass is also given of the pulley and the rotational kinetic energy of the pulley. So this change of the potential energy that the system lost went to the kinetic energy of both blocks and the kinetic energy rotational of the pulley. So I have M2GH is equal to one half M1V squared, they move at the same velocity, plus one half M2V squared, same velocity as M1, plus one half. And I have rotational energy, which is inertia of the pulley in angular velocity squared of the pulley so i have m2 gh is equal to they all have one house maybe i'll just times the whole thing by two every single term so two will appear over here then i have m1 v squared plus m2 v squared plus inertia of the um, disc is equal to one half m um, r squared and the mass of the disc and pulley are given in the radius so i have um so if i times them all by two this one half would be gone but inertia itself has one half so another one half appears m r squared and omega squared and i'm gonna take this times by two so it doesn't confuse us then or maybe write it in different colors so I times the whole thing by two then I have another one half I'm gonna times them all again by two and then replace r omega squared or r omega with the velocity because that's the tangential velocity of the rope through the pulley so times them all by two again gives me four m 2 gh equals to 2 m 1 v squared 2 m 2 v squared and m v squared so instead of r omega squared i have v and i'm solving for v so every single one of these terms has a v so i'm going to take that v out squared out and i have 2m1 
plus 2m2 plus m m equals to 4m2gh. So the velocity of both blocks is going to be equal to 4m2gh divided by 2m1 plus 2m2 and plus the mass. Plug it in the numbers, the one that we just set up at the beginning. So I have 2, uh, 4. The mass of block 2 is 2, so I have 4 times 2 times 10 and h is 1. So I have mass of block, block 2 is 2 kilogram, block 1, 1 kilogram, um, h is 1. And then divide it all by 2 times m1, which is 1, plus 2 times m2, which is 2, and plus the mass of the pulley, which is 0.25 kilogram. So the velocity of the blocks would be equal to 3.58 meters per second. Okay, so this is the one, the more difficult where you use pulley and you use uh, kinetic rotational energy. Uh, but now I am not going to give you what distance it has been fallen down and to figure out the velocity when it falls down this distance. Now I want to find the tension in the top and the bottom part of the rope, um, the one that is making the pulley rotate. So it's a different question now. So if we have the pulley is moving, the blocks are falling down, and I want to know acceleration and tension 1, tension 2 um, in the rope, uh, because if tension 1 was equal to tension 2, then in this case, the pulley would not be moving. So when the mass is ignored, then we say the tension is the same. But when the mass of the pulley is not ignored, then uh, the system changes the way you look at the question. So at first, I'm going to do uh, the forces acting on each block. So you have tension 1, you have tension 2, and you have M2G. And I'm ignoring the friction for now. So I have... Uh, tension 1, the net force is equal to M1A, and tension 2 is equal to minus M2G is equal to negative M2A. So if I move M2G to the other side, I'm going to have M2G minus M2A. Um, from here, I can rewrite what tension 1 minus tension 2 is equal to. So here I found what tension 1 minus tension 2 is equal to. Now I am going to look at the sum of the torques. So here I use the sum of all the forces is equal to ma. And I wrote these equations and used them. Now I'm going to look at the sum of all the torques is equal to uh, inertia times the angular acceleration. So there will be different formulas for my... Um, for my pulley. So in my pulley, I have the radius and I have the radius and I have tension 2 and I have tension 1. So the pulley, the pulleys or the torques are positive where the angle in like in the unit circle would be positive and negative where the angle would be negative. So for um, counterclockwise direction, torque is considered to be positive for clockwise direction torque is considered to be negative so i have in the torque formula um, says that the torque is equal to force times uh, the distance and um, sine theta so when the angle is 90 degrees you get the most torque so because we have 90 degrees, we don't have to worry about that sign part, but for the torques, I have tension 1R in a positive direction, so I have tension 1R minus, so it's the sum of the torques, right, minus the other one is negative, that's tension 2R, and equals to uh, inertia of the disk times its acceleration. So inertia of the disk is equal to one half m r squared, and you don't have to remember these formulas, but there are certain ones that I usually ask students to remember, especially for AP exam, because they need to know so the the hoop and the disk, the solid disk. 
so that will be equal to for instead of inertia I have one half am r squared and then I have alpha I see that every single one of these terms has an r so I can cancel every single one of them by r and I will have t1 minus t2 is equal to one half m and r times um, alpha is equal to tangential acceleration so this is tangential acceleration and all of that so this is t2 t1 minus t2 and this is t1 minus t2 is equal to this and i believe right here i had a one and this is a one so and that is going to be equal to so i have it equals two in all of this so that will be m1a minus m2g and plus m2a. So now I can times each one of these terms by 2 to get rid of the fraction. And then we're going to have ma is equal to 2 m1a minus 2 m2g and plus m m2a. So um, if I move all the a's to one side, and I need to remember that my um, angular acceleration is negative. So your angular acceleration is negative because the pulley is moving in the negative direction. Uh, so the acceleration, uh, angular acceleration and torque have the same direction negative when it's moving uh, clockwise. So I have to remember that this part is negative and this part is negative and this part is negative. So if I move them all on one side, I will have 2m2g is equal to ma. If I move ma to the other side, plus 2m1a and plus, um, I forgot to multiply this one by 2, 2m2a. So from here, if I take acceleration out on the right side, I'm going to have m plus 2m1 plus 2m2, and all of that is equal to 2m2g. So the acceleration is equal to 2m2g, and I'm going to plug in the numbers now, and I have m plus 2m1 plus 2m2 and equals to, if we plug in the numbers, we have, so I get 6.4 meters per second squared. And now, since I know what um, my acceleration is equal to, I can plug them in into the tension and find what tension one and tension two is equal to. So maybe let's do it in a different color. I'm gonna do it in orange. So acceleration is, we found, is 6.4 meters per second squared. And then M1 is 1 kilogram times 6.4. So tension 1 is 6.4 newtons. And uh, tension 2 is equal to M2G, which is 20. Two, M2 is uh, 2 kilogram and G is 10 minus 2 times m2a which is 2 times 6.4 which is 12.8 so 20 minus 12.8 will give me 7.2 newtons so this part is going to be 7.2 newtons so this is 7.2 newtons and this one is 6.4 newtons and this would cause us um, the pulley to rotate and have an acceleration. So I just wanted to go over this type of different type of questions uh, for you to be able to relate if you ever see anything on our tests or your other future tests or college uh, questions. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the future videos.